Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Welcome to Unit 6 of my Major Scale Maestro course. Today we are going to be checking out how to play Pattern 4 of the Major Scale. Now, a couple of things before we get going. First of all, you need to have memorized and be able to make music with Patterns 1, 2 and 3 before you move on to this one. It's not going to help you be a better improviser if you learn another scale pattern. You need to be able to make music out of the patterns you've got. Learning additional patterns just gives you more room to run around on the guitar neck. Okay, so you really make sure that you have memorized and can make music with patterns one, two, and three before you move on to this pattern. The other thing I feel like I should mention, which I'm hoping you know by now if you've got this far in the course, and that is make sure you learn your scale patterns really slowly. The same we've done with all of the patterns so far. Just learn them one string at a time, then the second string, make sure you've got that to memory, add a third string, memorize all of those, and just gradually build up the pattern so you're just playing it ascending from memory then ascending and descending back to the root note from memory, then add any notes lower than the root note. That system works really well. Do not make any mistakes while you're learning the patterns, right? Really, really just, just don't do that. Take it slowly enough that you play the patterns perfectly every time. Remember that practice makes permanent. It doesn't make perfect, so practice perfectly said it a few times, really important, it's worth repeating. Do remember to grab your PDF download as well, free for registered users of the website. Of course, it's got all your scale patterns and all of the other good stuff that you need for this course. <laughs> Okay, this is what I consider to be the default pattern for pattern four, okay? Now, there's something pretty cool happening here, which I'm gonna to explain to you now. And that is that you already should be very familiar with that much of the shape. Now, let me just play D major scale in pattern one, just so I don't have to move to another part of the neck and refocus the camera, uh, frankly. But here's pattern one. Should be very familiar with that by now. Two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, one, three, four, two, four, one, two, four. It's the finger numbers there for pattern one. Now let's look at pattern four again, back in the key of G. So second finger is going to be on the tenth fret, which is the note G, obviously. And look, the pattern is the same. Two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, one, three, four. Okay, but because we've moved on to the B string, we've had to move up a fret. Okay, that's one of those key things about the guitar is that anything that moves onto the B string moves up a fret. So the first part of the pattern, two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, one, three, four, is the same fingering as for pattern one. Now, before we had, in pattern one, we have then the two, four, but in this case, now it's one and three. Okay, so two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, one, three, four, but with that first finger moved up, and then one and three. Now, of course, when you're learning this, you should just be learning it a little bit at a time. That first chunk, this, you should be already familiar with that. That's pattern one. Okay, so then just finger up, first finger up one fret. So again, you want to practice just that much, make sure that you've got it to memory. When you feel hip with that, start to come back down. Do that a few times, make sure you've got it properly in your memory bank. Then work your way down and back up to the root note. So you end up with this 16th note pattern. your default. So now I'm just going to show you very briefly these couple of variations. I do think that as a default pattern is very solid, but these other ones are, I used to practice them as well. I used to practice all the variations of the different scales because I was never sure which one was going to be the right one for what circumstance. Uh, let's start off with the one that I call the Berkeley variation, which I first uh, saw in the William G. Levitt uh, book, uh, the commonly known as the Berkeley book. So in this variation, it starts exactly the same. But here, instead of moving up to one, three, four, we play the second finger and the fourth finger, and first finger drops back. So we're basically trying to keep second finger in the same spot. Otherwise, it's exactly the same. So here, the 
same, but instead of moving up, you then use second finger, fourth finger, first finger is dropped back, so it's the same as it would be on the thicker string. Now, the advantage with this one is the second finger staying in the same fret all of the time. It is generally easier to move the first finger back than it is to shift your whole hand, which in the kind of the default pattern, you have to move your first finger up a fret, which is sometimes you, you could see it as moving out of position. Now, it does feel a little easier to do that, but it, we've got then the, the, the string with just the two notes on it is on the B string uh, instead of on the thinner string which can also be good because we're used to having the two notes on the B string in pattern one. So picking wise, it doesn't feel as, as, as different maybe as some of the other patterns. Uh, but I also feel like we're moving the fourth to an uncomfortable spot. So what I mean by that is, here's your G chord. Now the fourth is right here. And if you're playing like a sus four chord or something like that, it's kind of easier to see it, relation, the relationship of it there than than there, which is the same, that is the fourth note of the scale, it's the same degree, but when I'm looking at my scale pattern around the chord, it just feels a bit easier to see all of the notes kind of wrapped around here, rather than having this, and again here, kind of fits around the chord shape a little easier to my fingers than this, this is, feels more distant. Now, I'm starting to use different fingerings here. Now, one of the advantages, I guess, of practicing different fingering options is that you get used to breaking out of the scale shape. And it's something we've definitely talked about before when we talk about one finger solos and that sort of thing, that learning a pattern, a scale pattern, and playing it up and down is all well and good. But you also need to learn how to break out of playing the scale pattern and starting to make it become like a musical relationship rather than just a visual one. So sometimes learning different patterns can be really helpful. Sometimes it can be just confusing because if you, especially if you're trying to play something pretty quick, if you're going, if your fingers are used to doing a certain pattern, you can just kind of tell it to go there. Whereas if it gets to this junction where it's going like, well, which fingering pattern am I doing? I've got three options here that it can get a little confusing as to which fingering to use. So it, it's a sticky little web, this one, and you have to make a decision as to which one's going to work better for you. I started off with this default one. I spent a lot of time just practicing the standard five patterns of the major scale and learning to link them together and play up and down one string and all of that sort of good stuff. And then I started exploring the variations because I was like, well, maybe there's an advantage to this other variation that this method uses. So I want to share them with you so that you can kind of get the, get the picture and get the idea, get used to the idea of making your own decision as to what's going to work better for you. Right. So this is, you know, at this intermediate grade, you need to be starting to make decisions about what you feel the most comfortable with, because everyone's going to be a little different. That's OK. It's good for us all to be a little different and to do things a different way. Makes music a little bit more creative. So on that note, let's have a look at this third common variation. So this third variation starts exactly the same. But adds another note on the top. Okay. Now, if you want to play these scale patterns as consistent 16th notes and come back to the root note every time, you do need to have two notes on one of the strings. That's how it's going to work. So here we'd have, even though we're starting with two notes there, it's actually there's three notes in the pattern. But if you had one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two and a 4 E and a 1. Okay, and then we're back to the one here again. But you see I left out that note, which is what we used in the default pattern. So basically, you can choose whether you put two notes on the thicker string or two notes on the thinner string. The default pattern has just two notes on the top and three on the bottom. But this variation you could choose has three notes on the top and two notes on the bottom. Now, some of you are going, well, why can't you have both? And you can. In fact, if you put three notes on every string, you end up in this 
three note per string pattern, which is a whole another system of practicing scale patterns, which we're going to cover in grade six, but I don't think it's what you should be going for now. And you end up, if you're playing it with a metronome, a different note will fall on the beat each time, which can feel weird when you're doing scale practice. It can be weird good because you get used to every note being on the beat, uh, but it can also be bad because you won't notice if you're making a mistake with your pick-in or something's going wrong, it's less likely you'll notice it. So my recommendation at this point is that you pick one of those patterns and you practice that a lot rather than trying to le learn all three of them. Now, the advantage of this last one is having that high note here, this which is a major seventh, which is, which is a nice sound it's a pretty hip sort of a thing so it also kind of it's leading you nicely into into pattern five so there is an advantage there as well but I still hold that this one with two notes on the top and three on the bottom is probably the best default it is a little awkward too here stretching that out trying to keep your second finger in the right not moving up and slipping there because what you don't want is this like shifting your hand but on the thicker string, that is a little bit stretchy there with the first finger. So for some of you, you might find this third variation. Now, I've just noticing as well, I'm really changing the fingering up here. And I've got this funny situation where I much prefer using my first, second and third fingers than using my little finger. I know it's short, but that's not the reason. It's just, I feel like here, this is more comfortable to use those fingers and but that's not really a fingering I would say to most people like yeah that's the fingering you should be using uh, I would suspect for most people it's going to be better to use the standard fingering first finger third finger fourth finger but again at this point you you've, you can start deciding what scale patterns and what fingerings for what scale patterns are going to be best for you when playing scales because the truth is that as you start adding melodic sequences to your scale patterns, you're going to change up the fingering anyway. So when you play a scale in thirds, you have to rethink the fingering. Uh, we're going to be looking in the very next unit about melodic sequences, uh, which are really super useful. They really help you break out of playing scales up and down. But again, there's all sorts of fingering conundrums that you're going to encounter where you can go like, well, which is the fingering that's going to work best for me? It's something that you need to decide on your own. I'll tell you the one that I think is the one that worked for me, which is probably a good starting point point but you should definitely be thinking about which is the best option for you. We're going to talk a little bit more about your practice routine for unit six in the next lesson but just remember when you come to practice your scale pattern you want to spend a little bit of time before you start practicing it up and down a lot deciding the fingering so figure out which pattern you're going to use which fingering option make sure that you've got it memorized and that you're playing it slowly and accurately before you even think about putting it to a metronome. Once you've done that, I'd recommend doing some improvising just using that scale pattern. Don't allow yourself to just scoot around the ones that you're already familiar with. Improvise just within that one scale pattern. Really get familiar with it. Then start doing the things like the one finger solo, but still within the same pattern. So not going not going outside any of the notes that are in your chosen scale pattern but just using one finger really build up a good map of that before you move on so I really hope you enjoyed this lesson I'll see you for part two in a second like I said it's going to be about exploring legato in the major scale and before I go, I just want to remind you, if you happen to be over on YouTube, I really appreciate you hitting that subscribe button and the bell if you want to get notified when I've got a new lesson. There's loads of fun things going on on my social media as well over on Instagram. And if you haven't been over to the website lately, do go and check it out. It's really looking slick. We've got some killer things coming up with the practice assistant as well. And all your routines can be nicely organized. And you can keep track of your stats and what scales you're doing at what speeds. And you've got your backing tracks there and all of that sort of stuff. It's getting pretty awesome. Do go and check it out if you haven't been there in a while. I'll see you plenty more very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.